Close Up is brought to you by the all-new Kia Sportage. Driving design. You wouldn't want to be manning the phones at Onihunga High today after John Banks, the new Associate Education Minister, cited it as an example of a charter school working well. Well, the phones went nuts. We couldn't get through, so we sent Matt Chisholm to find out if it really was that special. It could be any other school in the country. <laughs> We're a state-funded secondary co-educational school. But today, Onihunga High is in the spotlight. I'm going to be as Associate Minister of Education looking after uh, charter schools. That's schools like Onihunga High School that interface with business and are funded or help funded by private enterprise. What do you know about charter schools? Well, to be honest, not a lot. Um, I've heard that we've been mentioned in with the idea of charter schools with John Banks um, this morning and um, we're not a charter school. But here we go again, on a different station. It's worked at Onihunga High School, that's Onihunga Business High School, uh, and it's worked at Beards Road Intermediate. It's a very good idea and I'm very pleased about it because education is the key to this country's future, without a doubt. So there's no special charter here then? No, no, we're not a charter school. Charter schools sprung up in the States in the 90s and allow private businesses, church groups, charities or existing schools to take over the management of failing schools while retaining state funding. They don't have to stick to some of the rules governing other schools, provided they produce certain results set out in their charter. But that's not what's happening here just yet. We do have a couple of initiatives which are perhaps a little bit different, um, where we partnered um, industry, Fletcher Construction, with our building and construction school. And our business school was um, set up by Tony Falkenstein around 10 years ago. While Onihunga High has solid business partnerships which bring money, materials and expertise to the table, the companies aren't involved in managing the school. Do you know exactly how well you're tracking? Um, yeah, pretty well. We're, we're successful in, in keeping students on um, longer, students staying in with us right through to year 13, carrying on with their education, and general achievement is very good at the school. So a bit of a feather in your cap though today, being heralded as the way forward? Um, yes and no. Um, I think um, part of it is a bit of a misconception. Um, part of it's showing off what we're doing well, which is those partnerships that we've got set up. So, Onihunga High, not quite sure why it got singled out by John Banks. The minister in waiting wouldn't appear in close up tonight. Wasn't happy about how we treated him last time, apparently. But those who thought the issue of charter schools was important enough to front up on a PPTA president, Robin Duff, who I could think it's fair to say is not a huge fan, and in Topol, the principal of Corelli School of the Arts, David Self, who I think is a fan. Now, just clear something up, David Self, is your school? a charter school? We're New Zealand's only academic arts school. We're completely independent and we do seek support from business and individual sponsors and people that are arts lovers. So that fits the, the same American criteria. I've travelled the world and viewed different schools, Canada particularly, where they have these programmes working very successfully, uh, where in our case art students would be maintained amongst a, a big high school, say 1,500 students, there'd be 300 on an art school, exactly like what we're offering, and they get a lot of their resource funding from industry. OK, look, just tell me something. Why would my kids be better off at a charter school? Or would they? Good question. Um, I think the crux of the matter is what business are you in? OK, the Corelli School is in the business of educating children. Everything that they need is therefore provided. If they need a teacher aid or a special aids teacher or if they need extra resources, then it is provided. And this is how you achieve a school of excellence. Robin Duff, why can't we get that in the state system? Or can we? Well, we can. We can, it would appear already from the illustration you've used tonight. Uh, schools are using different and challenging ways to engage and work with their young people. The problem with uh, the schools that are being proposed is that they come from sort of second-rate education systems and they want to put this into our first-class system. And the basis of that, of course, is a change in management. There are going to be no controls on these schools and they can act like private schools and yet take state funding in with no accountability. But, but hang on, won't parents, in effect, vote with their feet? I mean, if we've got a first-class system, why is it failing so many 
children. It is failing a number of children, there are no questions. But those are identified already in terms of the, um, uh, as it were, the tail, as it were, in our education system, and also those who have particular or special needs. But, uh, for example, special needs uh, students are not going to be picked up on this system. They are only going to want students who are on that sort of marginal level. And the overseas research shows, particularly from Stanford University, that there is only a, a significant improvement for something like 17% of the students in their studies. Now, whether we want to uproot uh, our school system and put challenge uh, into it simply to uh, uh, you know, Im improve for those 17%, I think the work that's been done in the other school that you've illustrated and a number of others okay. is much more All effective right. and much better. David Self, I mean, is it then selfish? You're going to help a small number at the expense of the rest. And, you're, and the worry too, of course, as you'd know, is that you're going to cherry-pick the best students. No, I disagree. I think you've got to have a bigger picture here. You've got to look at why an independent school like the Corelli School is there, because of the parent requirement. Because the fact is that the, the, the parents are not getting the individual education uh, from the state sector. The figures of level one NCA students that are leaving unqualified is up to 20% in some schools. Um, we are a Cambridge only school, again, decided by the parents. So, you know, the other criticism that's been out there, uh, this in the last 36 hours, are schools then now to be treated like a business. I think schools have always been like a business. If you talk to any principal, uh, they will tell you that running their staff and providing a service is exactly the same as industry. So I think we're just becoming more aware. We can stick our head in the sand, but in five or ten years' time, this problem's still going to come up and we're going to be globally left behind. Robin Duff, I mean, isn't that what they're going to accuse the PPTA of, of sticking your heads in the sand? If you, you don't like the concept, what can you actually do about it? Well, there are a number of things. First of all, uh, you know, I would strongly contest that we're doing badly as a, as a nation. We are in the top performing countries in the world. And it absolutely uh, astounds us that somehow these sorts of uh, uh, systems that are essentially developed in, in countries like the US and the UK, who have never achieved any significant standings in the world uh, educational testing, should all of a sudden appear uh, as as, as a supposed uh, solution for some youngsters who are struggling. Won't we they fail that. then, though? If, they, if they're so bad and not delivering, won't they bring them in, they'll try them and they'll fail, and you'll be proved right? And, and, and what about the youngsters who are left at the end of that after the five or ten years of the experiment? We hear that Canterbury is going to be one of these experiments. It's not an experiment. Canterbury in the east and certainly central Christchurch has never been an educationally bankrupt or failing area. Are... What are they doing? They're now talking about using this system okay. to replace the good schools that were there previously and the good teachers right. and system. And I, 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 would, I, would, I would suggest I think there is the political world to at least try and experiment with this. But, look, we do thank you both for your time. Uh, David Sell from the Corelli School and Robin Duff from the PPTA. Thank you. Thank you.